Thank you for the introduction. So this work is in collaboration with Martin Gander and Bart van der Eiken, my two supervisors. Um, so during this talk, I will start with an introduction about Parareal, and then I talk quickly about dynamical low rank approximation. Then I give our new algorithm, Laurent Parallel, I start with an idealized formulation. I give the definition, a quick analysis, and numerical results. And then I give a more practical formulation of the algorithm with definition and numerical results. And then I conclude. OK. So first, let's give the setup. Um, we consider the initial value problem here. And the variable x is a matrix of size m by n. So this is called the matrix differential equation. So since it's a matrix, we can talk about the rank of the matrix. And we will suppose that the solution x can be approximated by a matrix y, such that the rank of y is equal to r. So y is in the manifold of rank r matrices here. And the question is, can we solve this efficiently this problem in parallel in time? So first I give the definition of the parallel algorithm that everyone know. Um, so we need an initial value, an initial iteration, and for the initial iteration, we use here the, the course solver applied iteratively. And this is the parallel iteration. And F represents the, the fine solver and G is the course solver. Some properties about parallel, it's easy to implement once you have already have a fine and a course solver. Your fine up step convergence, even if it's not necessarily useful in terms of speed up, um, it's good on parabolic problems and sometimes it's, ba it's bad on hyperbolic problems in general. Okay. Now I give quickly a visualization of the algorithm. Um, so first you discretize your time. So T0, T1, T2, T3, T4. And you start from your initial value and you compute iteratively using your cost solver. So iteratively you start from the initial value, compute there, and there, and there, and there. Now you have an initial guess of your solution and you can use your fine solver in parallel from here, here, and here, and here in parallel. Okay? And now you need to use the core solver iteratively again to propagate the solution over time. So, you propagate iteratively using the core solver over time. And now you have a fully more precise solution and you can repeat the process. Okay, that's it for parallel. Now let's talk about dynamical raw rank approximation. Okay, so what is this? The goal is to find a matrix Y of T such that the distance between the true solution X and the distance between and, and Y is minimal. Okay, so to do so, I need to convert my original problem here. It will become a new problem, and this problem is called dynamical low rank approximation. What do I need? First, I need my initial value here to be of rank R. Okay. And I also need to project the function onto the tangent space. So this is the projection onto the tangent space. By doing that, we are sure that the solution Y here is of rank R for every time T. And since it's the case, 
we can efficiently storage the solution and do less computations. So this is cool. Now we know theoretically that dynamical low rank approximation under few conditions is accurate, which means that indeed we have y approximately equal to x and we have bounds about the, the error. And this has, been, this has been proven by Corin Lubich and Kerry et al. And last but not least, we have strong a strong mathematical construction beyond this. This is called smooth manifold. Okay. Now I give a little visual visualization of low rank approximation. So I do here low rank approximation of a famous Swiss mathematician. This is Leonard Feller. And um, on the left, you can see a picture in black and white. So pink picture in black and white, it's just pixels between zero and 255. So it's just a matrix. So I do a singular value decomposition here of this matrix and I get it, that for, for the singular values. And now I can truncate the matrix to rank Q, to rank, let's say 5, 15 or 50. And I get this. For rank 5 approximation, I get this picture. It's much, much smaller, but also we cannot recognize the, ori the original picture. So we want to grow the rank a little bit. Okay, for 15, we have now less compression, but the picture is better. And now let's grow more the rank to rank 50. And now we have a very good approximation. Okay, so this is for low rank approximation. And if you want to a, vis a visualization of dynamical low rank approximation, you can think of the picture as a movie. Okay, so now I talk about our idealized method. Let me for the moment forget about dynamical lowering approximation. We just consider our original problem. So this initial value problem here. So our method we use as a core solver G, it will be the flow. So the flow is the solution of the problem. Um, the flow composed with the truncation to rank Q. And the fine solver will be the flow composed with the truncation to rank R. And now I just apply parallel. So as you can see here, it's the fine solver here combined with the coarse solver here and here. Of course, we cannot use this method in practice because we, we don't know the flow exactly in general, but it's just for theoretical purposes. And the goal here is to understand the role of the rank Q and R. How, to, what, what is the, the role of these two ranks in the convergence of the algorithm? Okay. So now let's do a little bit of analysis. So first we consider an affine problem here. Yeah. So we want to study the, the, the error and this is the iteration for the error. n plus one is the time step and k plus one is the iteration of parallel. Here is my solution. And here is my iteration of parallel. So now, just by definition that I gave on the slide before, I replace it. And I obtain that. Okay. Now, this is equal to this. 
here. And I subtract and addition this term here, here, and here. You can see it's the same term, just an addition and subtraction. Okay. So just for clarity, let me erase it. And the rest is the same. Now, for obtaining this inequality here, I say, okay, the identity minus the truncation to the rank Q is equal to the truncation to the rank Q perpendicular. Okay. So now you can see here you have identity of X and is here truncation. And since the problem is the fine, you can put it together and you obtain the truncation perpendicular here. Same here, identity, truncation to rank Q. So truncation perpendicular to rank Q. And finally, the, the last term is the same here and here, it's the same. Now I will use the Lipschitz constant of this here, and I get this. So the Lipschitz constant of the flow composed with the truncation to run Q perpendicular, and I get this. And the same here for the term here. And now we have an, an iteration on the error and we can work it with this. Um, the question of course is what is alpha and beta? So here yeah, I just give an idea about alpha. Um, we say that alpha is the Lipschitz constant of the flow composed with the truncation to run Q perpendicular. So alpha is equal to, well, the, the norm of the derivative of this, of this operator. And using the chain rule, you can bound this here by this. Now, since I assume that we had a linear uh, affine problem, the so solution is given by that. And then we can bound this operator here by this term where lambda is equal to the maximal eigenvalue of A. Okay. And this can be negative. Um, finally, we can also bound this using this very recent paper here by this term where sigma q are the, the sigma q are the um, singular values of the exact solution. So this is the singular values of exact solve. And this is valid in a neighborhood near the solution. Okay. So we get a bound for alpha. This is good. This is less good, but not that bad. Because we know that we have an exponential decay in general. So the gap, we have a large gap, but we do not know much about this gap between the singular values anyway we have a bound and the same bound is valid for beta. Great. Now I give some lemmas. So the first lemma is a linear bound 
given by this. In particular, alpha is really here the convergence rate of the algorithm. We also have a superlinear bound here. And finally, we have what we called an optimal bound because in the proof of this lemma, we only keep equalities. So we do not lose information about the convergence. So yes, just to give some proof ideas, uh, it's just an extension of the proof made by Gander and Arer in 28. And we really use the hypothesis that beta is smaller than one, which is the case numerically at least. And as I said before, we do not lose information in the last bound. So that's pretty nice. Okay. How does it behave? Um, we consider here the Lyapunov equation given by this. Okay. We are solving the problem on, on the time zero one. And we start from uh, X zero, which is a low rank. Moreover, A here is a sparse, mat sparse matrix. So the multiplication with, of A with X is cheap. Okay. And finally, C is tall matrix, which means we have a matrix like that. So this matrix is, will be low rank and you can compute quickly the, the action of this, of, this, uh, of this equation. Okay, so typically L is about 20, so small. Okay, if a is a one dimensional discrete Laplacian. This equation represents a, is a model for the two dimensional heat problem. And on the right, you can see the singular values. So in blue, it's the singular value, values of the initial value. So X zero. And just here, you have the error machine. And in green and orange, you can see the singular values at time t equal to 0 0.5 and t equal 1. So indeed, we have a, the solution admits good low rank approximation. And as you can see, it's an exponential decay. Look at the, the scale of this. OK. So this is the result of the algorithm applied with Q equal to. Now remember Q is for the core solver and the core solver was phi composed with the truncation to rank Q. So here with a very small coarse rank Q equal to, we have this convergence. We start from an error for the cross rank of 10 to the power minus three. And we go to the fine solution, which is the solution. This is the error machine here, okay. In red, you can see our linear bound. In purple, you can see the super linear bound which is better than the, lin than the linear bound in the end here. And finally, in brown, you can see the, what we call the optimal bound. And we indeed see at the, for the very last iteration, this is the finite step convergent property because the error goes to zero. But of course, here we have the machine precision. Okay. And in green, it's zero, the algorithm which is 
Nice. Now the question is, what happened for different rank Q? So here, here we have rank Q equal to, what for Q equal four, Q equal 10, I don't know. So this is what we show here. In green, it's again around Q equal two from the slide before. And for Q equal one, you see the error is slightly worse. And for Q equal three, it's slightly better and so on. So the higher the course rank is, the better the convergence here is. But also the algorithm is more expensive if you choose a, cross, a high cross rank. So this is to be expected, but this is a good behavior. On the right, since the problem is stiff, we wanted to check the, how it behaves for different sizes of the problem. So, and as you can see for different size, the, the behavior is the same. So no problem with stiffness here. So this is good also. Now, Let's talk a little bit about a practical, the practical method. So now we forget about the original problem. The original problem we used phi of h. This time, the solution of the dynamical low rank approximation, so this ODE here, the solution is psi of h. And then the algorithm is exactly the same. So the co-solver G will be the solution of dynamical low rank with rank Q composed with the truncation to rank Q. And the fine solver is the flow of the dynamical low rank of rank R composed with the truncation to rank R. I did not precise last time, but Q is smaller than one, than R. Q is smaller than R. So typically Q is very small, like two, three, four. And R is much bigger, like 20, 30, or whatever you want, but not too large, not, not N. Okay, so this is why the core solver is much cheaper than the fine solver. So this is cheap and this is expensive, more expensive. Okay. And as a rise, the, the iteration is exactly the same as usual, it's parallel. So this is F, G, and G. Okay. Um, a little remark at the, the iteration, each iteration is at most of rank R plus two, two Q. So, because here you have a matrix of rank R, here matrix of rank Q, and here again a matrix of rank Q. So R plus two times Q. So this is good because we, we, can, we can storage this matrix efficiently. This will be a small matrix in a sense, so you can storage efficiently, okay. A few more remarks. Of course, in practice, you don't have access to the exact flow psi. So we, we use what we call a dynamical Lorentz integrator, okay. Now I also want to emphasize the fact that the problem solved by the course integrator is not the same problem as the one solved by the fine integrator. The course integrator solves the problem of rank Q and the fine integrator solves the problem of rank R. So because of that, we do not have an analysis for 
the practical formulation. It breaks the proof. But we observe the same good numerical behavior as, as the idealized formulation. So we are we are hopeful. Okay. And here you can see few dynamical low rank integrators that have been recently proposed. Um, and this is a very recent topic, so more and more interrogators are coming. Okay. So this is a numerical result for the practical method. So here we used one of the integrators I gave just before. KSL, and um, it's the same Lyapunov problem. And as you can see, the behavior is really similar to what we've seen on the, on the slides before. It's the same behavior. So this is good. Okay. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about the performance of this, of this algorithm. Um, the core solver costs big O of N times Q squared. And the fine solver costs big O of N times R squared. So if Q is much smaller than R, we have a really good potential of speed of so in our experiments, we used often Q equal two and R equal 20. So the fine solver is 100 times more expensive than the core solver. It's me, it means that the core solver is about free to compute compared to the fine solver. And this is really nice. Okay, so let me conclude. Um, we've seen that parallel can be applied in the context of dynamical low rank approximation. And this is the very first attempt to a parallel in time integrator for dynamical low rank approximation. We've shown a, an idealized algorithm satisfying good theoretical bounds and also good numerical results. Um, we also gave a practical algorithm. So it's a, an efficient reformulation of the idealized algorithm that we can really use in practice. But, uh, and we also have similar good results, but we do not have theoretical bound yet. And in the future, we would like to extend our, our analysis to the practical algorithm and also understand better the role of the ranks in the convergence. So thank you for your, inter your intention, it was my talk. And uh, here you can find some references if you're interested in this subject.